My name's Eric Wielander and welcome to Windy Tech, a channel all about smart home tech in the Apple ecosystem. Today we're gonna to talk about my new smart home server closet and how I use the iHome smart monitor to kick it up a notch. As you get various smart home tech, it often requires some kind of a hub that's attached to your network. For example, uh, Lutron and Hue are two systems I have that require a hub, and other ones have optional hubs like the Belkin Wemo system. And then if you're also using Homebridge on something like a Raspberry Pi, or you have a network attached storage device, not to mention whatever way you get your internet into your house through a cable modem and wireless routers and everything else, uh, this starts to add up to be a lot of electronics. And on top of that, you might want to add an uninterruptible power source so that when the, the electricity flashes, it doesn't all go down. So where is this all going to go? And initially, I had a just single shelf under my stairs where I tucked all of this away and it wasn't visible as great, but it was very difficult to get to and um, was just getting really crowded. So I wanted to move this whole thing to a more accessible area, easier to get to and manage, still out of sight. Um, I went ahead and installed installed some closet style shelving from my uh, local home improvement store. When I first set up this shelf, one of the key things I was worried about given that it was in the basement was the temperature. When it gets frigid cold in the winter, is it gonna get too cold where it was in the basement? Uh, and also just with all these hot electronics, cramped up in a closet is it going to get too hot and just keeping an eye on making sure that the temperature in that closet was safe uh, and good for the electronics and so i found the ihome smart monitor and this is a uh, like five or four five in one smart home monitor that allows you to check the uh, not only the temperature but also the humidity the sound the motion and the light levels uh, and then that's visible through HomeKit. Now, not all of those sensors are visible through HomeKit given what HomeKit does and doesn't support right now, but it's a really great all-in-one device to accomplish a lot of these. So for example, there's a motion sensor that you can hook up to HomeKit automations, as well as then of course seeing the temperature and the humidity level of that area. The device powers via micro USB and comes with a uh, wall outlet, so it's you don't have to worry about changing batteries in it. So I'd already been using this in my existing setup, but only really for temperature and humidity. And by moving it out into a more prominent area, I wanted to then take advantage of the motion sensor. So then of course I installed a, a Hue light bulb in a lamp nearby so that when the motion sensor triggers for me opening the closet, the light inside the closet turns on and lights the, the server. And of course I made it a Hue color bulb so that I can do all kinds of fun colors and just, I, I really like this like shade of purple it just looks really nice so let's go take a look at the server closet and you'll see that the motion sensor here on the iHome picked up on that we came in and then turned on the Philips Hue bulb over here in this light and I found that this motion sensor isn't always the fastest. It um, sometimes has a little bit of a delay, even up to like a couple seconds before it will register and change the lights. So it's important to remember though with motion sensors, the best way to have them set up to be triggered is where the motion will occur from movement across the motion sensor like this. If the motion occurs going forward and back towards the motion sensor, it can often have more difficulty picking up the motion. In this case, I wanted the display here to show the temperature right on the shelf and uh, everything. If, I, if it was just a motion sensor, I might put it, say, near the door, uh, maybe even outside the closet just to better pick up the motion coming towards the closet, or maybe even use a door frame sensor like the one from Eve. In this case, I thought this was just a nice enough balance to put the iHome at an angle, so that way it still kind of gets this sort of side-to-side -side motion that it picks up on even though it's not in 
the most ideal position. So then on this shelf we have the Homebridge Raspberry Pi that I've done a video on previously about setting up. Um, probably do some more videos on. Um, that's right here. And then this is my Belkin Wemo hub to connect some of my older Belkin switches. I'll probably do a video about this later because I feel like it's actually giving me a better connection to Belkin smart plugs than um, just doing direct Wi-Fi with some of the new ones. Um, then here's my Synology. It's a pretty old Synology or from about like 2015 or so. Only about four terabytes, but I use it just mostly as a automatic backup system of all kinds of different things in the house. I don't really, you know, use any of the like Plex or streaming video or stuff on it. Uh, but it's it's great to have um, this network storage and have a storage device that's that's smart. Like you can plug a drive into it and it'll back it up and all this stuff. And that's that's really nice. Um, up here we have uh, the main Eero hub. Uh, this is an Eero Gen 1 system I have in my house and um, I have three of these around the house and they're great. Uh, then of course next to that we now have the Lutron hub as well as the Philips Hue hub. Um, I've done the multiple videos on both Lutron and Philips Hue and probably will do some more in the future. So then over here on a stud, uh, because the motion sensor isn't always fast enough, I added a Philips Hue switch here to turn on and off that light. Uh, it also is programmed to do some automation. When you hit this button in HomeKit, it will also turn on the basement lights nearby, which I frequently need um, when I'm down here because uh, we also have the cat litter stuff in here. So I will go um, go down here and get the cat litter stuff and then need the other basement lights on. So uh, just a little bit of automation there. Then below all the hubs and networking, we have the 24 port switch that I got from TP-Link. This is an unmanaged switch. Um, and I've been very pleased with it so far. I mean, it seems like the Eero has no issue uh, managing this switch and uh, it's just really nice to have all of these ethernet jacks. And then we go down into the power area um, and you'll notice it's not really cable managed. I found, you know, one of the nice things about doing this kind of a closet setup where you have studs in the wall, it really kind of cable manages itself. And yeah, it doesn't look beautiful, but I don't really see this area too much. So um, just having that tucked behind the studs I thought was enough. And then this way, when I need to change and unplug stuff, I don't have to undo a bunch of cable ties just to just to move one thing. I mean, it's pretty easy to, to get at and modify any one particular thing in the closet. But this is my uninterruptible power source. It is just a simple APC battery backup. And then I also have my Netgear cable modem. Okay, so now we're back here in the office and I just wanted to talk about the iHome app that iHome, the company that makes this sensor, also ships. Now you don't need the app to set up this device. You can do it completely through HomeKit. Um, but there are a couple of the sensors that you don't really get as much information on, like the sound sensor um, in the HomeKit app. It can, this HomeKit can show you the light level, the temperature level, and the humidity level, but it can't show you the sound. Um, and one of the cool things you can do in the iHome app is go ahead and set push notification alerts. So if Let's say, for example, maybe this server closet is something where you don't want uh, your children or someone else getting into this area, especially during certain times of day. You can set up to get a push notification when some of these sensors are triggered. So if I go here into the iHome app, uh, it'll show me my sensors, my iHome sensors in my home, and then I can go under rules and I can add a rule to get a notification about when the sensor's triggered in a certain way. So I can add a rule um, and I can say receive sensor notifications. And I'm gonna call this like too hot in server closet. So then I hit continue and select a sensor device, the server closet sensor, and I'm gonna add a trigger for temperature and say if the temperature exceeds um, I don't know, let's just say 75 degrees, then we're going to trigger. So do that. There we go, that was weird. I had to like tap on the top cell to get that to stop. I don't know, being kind of buggy, but now I have it set. If the temperature exceeds 75 degrees, I will get a notification. So then I create the rule 
and now I'll get a notification on my phone when uh, the server closet's too hot. So it's a great way to continually monitor the situation and make sure that everything's safe and working okay in my server closet. So I would say if you're looking to set up a server closet or you already have some kind of a server closet set up, uh, this five in one smart monitor is a great way to keep tabs on it and check the temperature and humidity and then also use the motion sensor for triggering some automations. Motion sensors and automations in HomeKit aren't always the fastest thing in the world as you saw earlier. but it's better than nothing. And I think having everything combined in this one device is and, and not having to worry about changing batteries is really nice. So let me know down in the comments below what you use to monitor things like temperature, humidity, or motion around your house. I know there's a whole bunch of products out there like that. Um, and uh, I'd love to hear some of those solutions. Have you set up a server closet of your own? I think that can be like a really nice weekend project or something. Thanks again so much for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. Give the video a thumbs up if you haven't. It really helps other people find it. And I'll see you in the next one.